Okay, now I'm going to work on the skeleton of my overview page. And basically, remember, I'm going to use this snippet model that I did in the previous course to create my pages faster. So all the pages are going to have the same skeleton. And then on my CSS, I will be able to use the power of Tailwind to give the same style to every page. So I'm just going to start here with my uh, header. So I'm going to put an H1 and here it's going to be a dashboard. And then after this, I'm going to put a paragraph and I'm going to put all the informations, all information, let's say, about your, finan your current finances. All right, so I'm going to save and if I come back, I got this, there we go. Then we've got the main here and in the main, we got this kind of title and what I want to put, I'm going to put a div and here I'm going to put, here is a tab, okay? And here I'm going to have a section, etc., etc. So let me explain to you quickly here how I'm building this application. When you get an application to build, there is actually two ways of doing it. The first way is to um, build on the fly like this, okay? So you have an ID, you build the elements because everything is in your head, which is actually my case. I've seen so many dashboards in my life that I know basically what I'm going to do, okay? And what I want to do. The second way, it's what most of the developers are doing. Um, actually, you got like a template, like let's say on Dribbble, you got a template and you are building this element. So what you need to learn how to do is that when you see a dashboard, you know that there's a sidebar, there's a main page, there's a header and stuff. So you need to cut all these elements into atomic components. That's really important. That's really important for the developer experience because in the future, I want any developer of my team to be able to go faster into the component folder and to retrieve the actual components. So basically what I'm doing here is that on one page, I'm creating the header, then the main, then the footer, but probably later I would have a, um, a dashboard component, for instance, with these elements, or I will have a header.view, etc., etc. Okay, so here, what we want to do, we want to respect a certain convention into this next finance dashboard. Why? Because we want to build on a, a design system that we don't have. So how can we build on a design system that we don't have? Well, with the experience, you build your own design system in your head or what you want to do, and you can jump on that. If you don't get that, this experience, please always repeat the same model or look into new models um, of dashboard on Dribbble or whatever. If you don't know Dribbble, it's a website where you can find dashboards. So here we've got an example here. As you can see, we've got different elements with cards and here a chart, etc., etc. This is exactly what we're going to build. Okay, We are going to build a dashboard with some charts here and directly inside our next JS application. Okay, so as you see, we've got a header here. We've got a header dashboard and it's written hi, Tam, welcome back. And probably we can do the same. So if I come back on top of it, I can put hi, Guillaume, welcome back. Okay, hi, welcome back, Guillaume, let's say. Welcome back, Guillaume, there we go. And we're gonna build this thing like this. Okay, so Let's continue. So here I'm going to have a tab with several options. Okay. So here the several options, it's going to be um, today. Okay. Um, this week. Okay. Or this month. Okay. And we're going to do that. We are going to build that. Build that. So tabs here today, this week, this month, this year. Okay, and we're gonna switch on that. On this section, I'm going to have a chart, okay? And this chart is going to switch between today, this week, this month, this year. Okay, and on my footer, I'm going to have, I will have three different cards. The, those three different cards will be displayed that way. Oh, all right, so here, what we can do at first is to work on this paragraph and this H1 dashboard here. So remember, uh, I think we did it, or if we didn't do it yet, yes, we got a CSS uh, 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 folder, which is here, 
called Tailwind CSS. So either you want to switch on SCSS or either you want to stay on CSS, whatever, it's going to be the same. Let's say that my H1 on my body here, and I'm going to apply this, so I'm just going to remove that because I know some of you are telling me uh, they want to remove this part of the frame where I'm talking now. I think it's part of my identity to get this part of the frame, but anyway, I'm going to keep it like this. I'm going to apply here, and let's say that I would like to have a title of a certain size. So you can use the size of Tailwind, okay? So we see that here it has been applied on all the H1, but me, I'm going to put a custom size. So to do that, you use curly brackets. I'm going text P4, and I want to add a font, and here I can put a font of 700 or 800 or font bold or whatever. And suddenly we get this. So I'm going to come back to a normal size. We see that it's really big. <laughs> I'm going to change it. Instead, I'm going to put 40 pixels. And there we go. We've got this dashboard in here. If we keep that example, we can see that the font is not that big and that thick. So probably I can switch back to this. And probably here is going to be 36. There we go. Now on the paragraph, I'm going to apply some um, colors. So here I'm going to have a text neutral 500. Again, how do I know that? It's because I know Tailwind. So if you want to use Tailwind, you can go on Tailwind Colors. And here you got plenty of colors that you can use. And here, let me give you a quick example um, between the different gray colors that we got. This is a really deep course into designing an application, so I want to focus on that kind of details. Here, we can see that we got Slate, and it's really blue, like, we can see that the gray is blue. Then we got the gray, but this, gr this gray, it's a bit blue. For the zinc, it's totally the opposite. The gray, it's a gray, a lot like the stone here that you got on the bottom. So me, most of the time, I'm using neutral because neutral, it's really gray in comparison. If you look at the 400s here, you can see the different pieces of colors. We've got the uh, neutral 400 that is very cool. So here I put uh, 500, but I could put 400. And here we should be good. Okay, so we got this. Probably here I can see that I want to add some more size, some more, more weight to this dashboard. So, hi, welcome back, Guillaume. And we see here that when I added the color here, it's impacting my next finance that I got here. So, this is a common case when you do some designing, you got to be sure about what you want to do as a design system at first. So, a lot of developers they are working on the Figmas. Um, and designers, designers that are also developers are designing first the app, which is a long process. But here it's always useful to know how you're going to build your app. If we come back to my sidebar here, I can see that I can put text black because this is probably the only paragraph that I want to be black and all the other paragraphs are going to be gray. Okay, this is the first part. Then the second part, let's come back. So we got those two elements. Probably all the headers, I would like to apply them some uh, space between the elements. And this is where we should talk about the grid. So here we can see that I got my header. And probably what I want to do is to put ma uh, uh, margin on top and on bottom. So if, if I put margin 12, look what is the result. I like this space here, but I don't like the space up here. So to fix that kind of problem, actually, it's not to add some margin on top of the bottom, but to add a grid on the parent and to add what we call a gap. So I, I can put gap, gap 8. And suddenly we see that I got the spaces that have been added between the element of my actual, um, my actual page. What I can do also is to put an age screen minimum to be sure that all my elements are going to be displayed equally. And if I want to have an element that is bigger, I can put a class grow. And here it's not working because I should use um, basically the flex to do it. But I could do that if I would like to have this tab to be bigger. So suddenly we get this with hi, welcome back, Guillaume. And that's good. Okay, what I would like to do also here it's to remove the margin on the uh, paragraph because by base, all the paragraph got a margin. There we go. So we got hi, welcome back, and we got this um, dashboard title that is done. So this was the second lesson. Let's pass now to the third lesson. Before I work on the chart, and it's going to be a new lesson and on the cards, 
What I would like to do is to simulate a fake uh, space that is taken in here. So to do that, what I want to do, I'm going to wrap this div here. I'm going to go for 8 of 12 and a width full. Okay. And when we come back here, we got this rectangle, this rectangle box here that is representing something. Actually, I'm going to go on a BG neutral 200. There we go. Okay. It's in the header. What I would like to do is to fulfill that space here, which is empty. I would like to have some kind of button. But to do so, what I want to do is actually to come back to my default layout. And here on this slot, I would like to add a width full so I can be sure that I got the whole space. And we can see here that suddenly this fake button is here. So now I can come back here and put flex item start justify between item start because we would like to have the element there and we can see that it takes all the space so now what i can do is to put grow in here and instead of having wasteful i'm going to put for instance 112 pixels and i got this button this thing that is here this fake thing i don't know yet what it's going to be i can even put a 36 pixels because it's going to be more like a button. Okay, I'm going to do exactly for the charts. Um, okay, I'm going to do exactly the same for the chart and the cards down there and we're going to look at the result together. Okay, and there we go. We've got the skeleton of the application. It's really useful to do a skeleton of an application like this to see where you are going to put the elements. But there's a lot of problems between the margin, the size of the eight and stuff. So the first thing I'm going to remove is the eight screen. And suddenly we've got those elements that are going to do like, probably like a bento. Now we want to work on the gaps. And if you look at this here, I've been working on the gap and probably I would like to put the, the same gaps a bit everywhere. So we can see here that I got a gap too and suddenly there's more coherence like we understand way more where we go. So we got the dashboard here and it could even be here this piece of UI. It could even be another component that would be our loader. So I wanted to show you through this lesson that sometimes when you want to build an application it's always good for the vision if you don't get any design system or any uh, template to follow that you can create skeletons of applications like this to display the element. So here we know that we're going to have some cards. Here we know that we are going to have a chart and some tabs that are going to change the data that, that is going to be here on here. And then we also know that we got this button up here.